Welcome to another episode of the Coffee Conversation Show powered by the Emerging India Forum, TIF, and our tech partner, Prime Infotech Solution. Series is the Emerging Cybersec Professional. Theme is Empowering Businesses Through Cyber Intelligence. So today, friends, we are at Pearson, the chocolate bar, and we have with us Shubham Parekh, our guest speaker. He's a global alliance head at Deep Sites, an award-winning impact creator. He has a rich background in analytics, consulting, and project management. Shubham has played a pivotal role in transforming large-scale projects and driving meaningful change in the cybersecurity landscape. His experience as a former Chief Minister's Fellow and a strategic member of the Mumbai COVID War Room has equipped him with unique insights into the importance of resilience and innovation in times of crisis. So friends, let's welcome Shubham. And uh, I want to explain to you format. We have got two rounds, but there is a third round, uh, which is a rapid fire for which you have to be quick, okay. funny, witty, and you get to win this book. Is your organ cyber healthy? Authored by me. So friends, I'm Lion Amir Mirani, your host for today at Coffee Conversation and a legal tech evangelist. So, and an author of 13 e-books. So Shubham, yes. welcome once again to the Coffee Conversation episode. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Okay. So my first question in your professional journey round, Shubham, how has the journey been in the world of cybersecurity domain till date? Okay. Till date, my journey has been filled with lots of good experience, lots of very interesting people that I've met, lots of innovation stuff that I've uh, you know gotten a chance to work with and a lot of impact that we all have been able to create. Um, and the journey keeps just going, 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 and it's just gonna go up. As everyone knows, last year itself, around $8 trillion was the total amount of cybercrime damages. And uh, this figure is about to reach 10.5 by 2025. So since the problem is growing, uh, we have to keep on working day and night to create more impact and bring in that global change. Wow. So now let's come to your current role as the Global Alliance Head at Deep Sites. Mm. Uh, what is your work role and what strategies do you employ to establish meaningful partnerships in cybersecurity space? Okay. Uh, regarding partnerships, one very important uh, thing I would like to share. Uh, first is you don't have to uh, sort of reinvent the wheel. If you look around, solutions are already there. You just have to pick the right solution from the right place. Uh, second is you have to keep on constantly talking to people. Cyber, as everyone knows, it's a evolving space. You have to stay ahead of the curve. Look at every day's you know uh, scams that have been happening, the kind of tactics the people are creating to you know dupe people. Um, regarding strategies, first of course finding the good people, finding the right teammates, finding the right partners for a few projects and uh, you know setting up those meaningful uh, partnerships is something that needs to be done okay that's lovely so now uh, what are the biggest challenges you face in your current role and how do you overcome them okay uh, biggest challenge i would say is see there is so much that needs to be done and there is so less or so so much you know little time so in that case, of course, a lot of uh, you know projects have to be handled uh, parallelly. You have to rely on a lot of people, a lot of good people. Plus, you have to learn how to delegate also. So there might be, let's say, 20, 30 things that you are working upon. And uh, I usually like to follow the 80, 20, 20 model, where, uh, sorry, 60, 20, 20 model, where, uh, you know, first you prioritize the 60% of the work that needs to be done. After that, uh, you keep 20% of your time for uh, you know any of the work that's not exactly high priority but if you keep on waiting it's gonna keep on continuing and you keep 20% of your time for activities that might just you know come without uh, you know any specific knowledge okay that's good so now uh, how's experience been working in government and corporates government and corporates okay uh, this might sound a bit funny, but uh, I uh, like I was the person who used to refer to government as government. 
I don't know how many of you will actually uh, get the mm. reference, but uh, I have seen firsthand the kind of scale that the government works at, the kind of impact that can be brought, and uh, usually people have this intuition that uh, you know government is very slow, uh, you know people don't work over there. But I first have compared, um, you know, corporates versus the government. and uh, without any doubt i can say the government has been working very efficiently and effectively uh, covid was one such example where you actually get to see a lot of things that were done in such uh, you know less uh, time frame okay now uh, what uh, security measure should hmm. a corporate take because now cyber crimes uh, malsum uh, sorry ransomware are increasing other types of uh, cyber attacks are increasing so how can data be protected mm. by the uh, corporates and what kind of training or awareness should be given to the employees so that data which is very critical mm. is safeguarded okay uh, see i would like to say this that uh, we as humans uh, if i ask you a simple question कि अमित जी लास्ट वीक आप यू नो कहाँ कहाँ गए थे वॉट ऑल थिंग्स डेट यू डिड हु ऑल डिड यू हैव अ वर्ड विद ऑफकोर्स यू वोट शेयर दैट एग्जैक्टली यू वोट एग्जैक्टली शेयर दैट विद मी बट ऑल ऑफ दैट इज नोन बाय योर फोन एंड रिगार्डिंग एनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इफ आई आस्क यूर क्वेश्चन कि योर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंटायर सिक्योरिटी डिपेंड्स ऑन विच पर्सन यूजली पीपल थिंक इट्स द आई टी टीम और सम ऑफ द सी स्वीट मेम्बर्स बट it depends on each and every person even the watchman right uh, organization is like a block and then there's a chain that it is tied to on the ceiling and every piece of that chain is responsible and even if one piece of that chain kind of breaks away the entire entire organization falls apart uh, so basically um, you know awareness and training is the first thing that every organization should look at uh, we've seen so many cases where uh, like it's possible for me to send you an email using your email without getting access to your password we have actually done it and shown it to people and uh, it was a shocker for all of them it's very easy to create images or pdfs and embed uh, viruses or ransomware or malware inside it so awareness is the only thing that should be done first and after that you can have the strongest or strongest of products in your environment but if the people are not adept with the the kind of crimes that have been happening uh, every organization is going to fail yeah very true so we uh, at prime infinity we have a product that metadeck mm-hmm. which handles uh, metadata cleaning mm-hmm. there the responsibility is on the human if uh, if you don't clean your documents because there are hidden confidential data which goes across so human have to be aware ke bhai mein uh, the tool ko if i am not using a tool and it goes to, to wrong hands mm. or it is being hacked yeah. so there have been cases ke uh, government uh, there have been pentagon cases which have got leaked by uh, foolish people there have been apna uh, google has lost so much money microsoft so many people have lost so money so yes awareness training is very much important but now my another question will be uh, what is government doing in terms of awareness and uh ye the laws the cyber laws i'd like to first focus on the laws um as you know first there was the it uh, it protection act but after that the government recently rolled out the data protection act right the data protection bill uh, right now also there are um, you know so many things that need to be finalized even all the businesses and organizations are waiting for everything to be kind of uh, you know written on a stone of sorts but uh, government is doing its bits uh, in terms of bringing in the right set of laws uh, if because of any organizations um, you know oversight any of your uh, you know private data kind of gets hacked or leak gets leaked on the dark web uh, it is the organization's fault it might be possible that you are working with any third party that's where the third party risk also comes in and if you have a third party because of which you lost data then also the the government is going to come after you but uh, you know it's a good first step we just need to kind of spe- uh, you know spread a bit more awareness about it 
uh, we've seen so many cyber safe initiatives being run by different um, you know local governments and the central government but uh, you know it's not reaching everyone so in terms of reach i think a lot of companies kind of have to you know come together in and sort of create a more collaborative ecosystem in spreading the awareness about it because um, the the info about a scam spreads very fast it's very viral but how did it happen why did it happen and how can you stay safe from all of those kinds of scams is something that we all need to focus upon wow so now this new act will just come into force mm. very soon the dpd act uh so what kind of preparations company has to do it from their end and what will be the uh, there will be a lot of uh, opportunities for cyber security companies like you and others mm. how they will uh, how equipped are they mm. for uh, the managing the dpda provisions okay so uh, first is every company has to have a ciso right and that ciso needs needs to kind of know in and out about everything related to cyber right um in terms of uh, you know getting the right people what we have seen and it's it's a known fact that globally there are millions of jobs that are just sitting there for people who have some kind of cyber uh, specialization uh, red teaming is something red teaming and the knowledge of dark web if you club it together and if you have all of that it kinds of adds like five stars to your entire profile um red teaming and dark web is the next game in fact uh, one very specific thing that i'd like to point out um so i can see that the camera is also of iphone uh, mercenary spyware if you don't know about it mercenary spyware is a spyware which is basically pegasus 2.0 mm -hmm. and uh, we've seen that uh, it has affected a lot of people apple itself rolled out a notification in more than 92 plus countries mm -hmm. saying that you might be spied upon because of who you are or what you do right so how do you exactly go about finding a spyware that's where you know our team found out about it we did a proper rca figured out how is it working and that's where we you know we reached out to all the you know people that are in are you know in our network right so um, just keep on upskilling yourself in terms of red teaming dark web dark web is the place where you can find so much and so much of gold data right even if uh, you know i just know your name i can figure out all of your leaked passwords your address your old address what is your profession uh, how much you used to earn every bits and pieces of details in, uh, including your aadhar card data is right now sitting there on the dark web so if uh, you know if you are a person who is interested in all of this uh you need to keep on upskilling yourself and uh, in terms of opportunities there are lot of opportunities not just national but international also wow okay so i'm just uh, long time back i was watching this movie mm. uh of uh, yeah, will smith behind enemy lines oh okay. so that was ke by uh government intrusion mm -hmm. uh, apna uh, tracking the calls coming the uh, he, he was a a lawyer and he had on the run so there was this one line who will watch the watchdog there are there are people i think but yeah <laughs> yeah a very beautiful movie which is very relevant in today's time mm -hmm. okay so now let's uh okay can you share some innovative projects that you have led at deep sites and its impact okay the first one i think i've already mentioned the spyware part the anti spyware part is what we have developed um every phone that you use doesn't matter if it's android or uh, apple it's not safe at the software level as well as the hardware level we have seen so many cases where uh, hnis or senior people senior government officials were spied upon by uh, you know different people from market or outside or inside basically to gain a lot of access data from their end and use it in some of the other ways right so in terms of that uh, we came up with a very innovative approach and a product itself the anti spyware suite uh, second is actually there are so many i'm kind of finding it a bit hard to mention but uh, we managed to automate uh, so many things when it comes to audits the red teaming part 
uh, usually p companies go for vapt and uh, mm-hmm. you know cert certified vapts right yeah. but uh, red teaming is the next game it's like 100 levels beyond vapt yeah. where you basically think like a hacker and then you try to attack the system to find what are the gaps so we have automated uh, most of it where uh, usually if a red teaming activity takes let's say 30 days or 40 days we have been able to condense that entire timeline and uh, apart from that we have also um, launched our own operating system it is india's first cyber operating system and world's ninth operating system and uh, this operating system kind of sits in the middle of every product that we have and uh, every suite that we have it's it's like an offshoot of it and uh, yeah there are so many i'd love to talk about all of it for the next 10 hours but i know we don't have that much time yeah so that is another uh, at coffee conversation we have uh, you or you say uh, three types mm-hmm. this is the main coffee then we have uh, mini coffee where we uh, the speaker talks on the subject topic so we can uh, continue there, the conversation so over there then there we have special you, episodes so there do you serve espresso shots <laughs> instead of the large coffee <laughs> <laughs> yes okay so now shubham who has influenced you from the cyber security world okay so when when you ask that question i like to think it in two ways there's always a positive influence for something and there's always a negative influence for something uh, regarding positive influence i'd like to mention two very special people uh, first is dipika my colleague um mm-hmm. i remember this conversation that i had with her almost 2 years ago in i think month of may may 2022 yeah um that was when you know we spoke about the the rising number of crimes and uh, mm-hmm. you know what should be a, the approach how should you know people go about tackling it what could be the innovative paths and um, that's where you know my my interest picked and uh, that's where you know we started uh, you know working uh second is uh, mr edward snowden uh, everyone knows the kind of voice that he has mm-hmm. and uh, in terms of the negative influence um, i have seen a lot of cases where um, in fact you know people with uh, no no specific uh, cyber knowledge or uh, any engineering background in fact uh, i'd like to mention one specific uh, engineering vertical that is not taught by any of the engineering colleges in india or outside but all the cyber criminals have kind of mastered it and that's the uh, engineering called social engineering in mm-hmm. fact more than 80% of crimes that have been happening in india are not done by any specific hacker groups uh, these are the people who let's say you know they have dropped out of school or college and they just know how to talk to people and uh, make them to you know give their data or otps on all the kinds of things right so that's the negative influence part and um, i've also seen a few cases where people have kind of taken it to the next level where one person was responsible for uh, taking out like almost 100 200 crores in a time frame of less than one year so you know that's where we thought you know we need to do something about this um, this is a rising problem and uh, a lot of people are losing their lives uh, people are losing yes. their privacy Yeah. um deep fakes is something that we've every uh, you know we've seen everywhere uh, people are talking about ai but uh, what about the security aspect of the ai right everyone wants to integrate ai into their systems people are talking about let's make a chatbot let's do this let's do that integrate all the discounting part with the chatbot but um, have you actually gone through the entire drill of a chatbot or ai Uh, we've seen cases where uh, using chat gpt there is something called a jail breaking so using jail breaking you can actually make chat gpt to give you a recipe of a molotov cocktail or a ransomware you just need to know the right tweaks that you need to make to the uh, command that you are giving mm-hmm. it to it right and uh, there have also been cases where people were kind of able to um, take money from a company instead of giving uh, the money to the company for any booking of sorts so uh, in terms of technology and stuff there's always a curve technology is somewhere somewhere a bit ahead security aspect is something that we think about much later okay uh, my next question will be companies where there have been uh, cyber uh, incidents mm. 
and uh, due to lack of uh, the, what do you say systems are not in place so who is responsible in such scenarios and uh, what next steps should the management take to avoid such kind of uh, repeat incident happen so i'd like just I, I, like i just want to uh, mention one more thing that to, to the question that you had uh, you said systems i would always say systems and processes you can have the best system but if the process yes. is not clear that's where uh, things start falling apart in terms of who is responsible i'd say everyone not just one specific person the entire company is responsible doesn't matter if you are the top brass or the lower rung uh, security as i mentioned it depends on every person in that company every element of that chain and even if one chain breaks apart the entire organization goes down in terms of what next steps should be taken first of course uh, you know figure out exactly why it happened and see there is a difference between it and cyber security Yes. uh you need to get good experts in your team people who know everything or people who know people who know everything right like you can't have every piece of knowledge in that one single person so you have to rely on a few experts but also build in you know internal uh, do some internal skilling um and second of course keep on training people because majority of the cases that we have seen in fact all the cases that we have seen it has been because of some or the other oversight yeah. uh, let's talk about a ransomware attack so ransomware attack happened because someone um, you know clicked on a phishing link or mm-hmm. downloaded something that's where they got the access to that one system through that one system it was kind of able to spread in that entire network and impact everything right so if if the person knew the first mm-hmm. person uh, if the first person knew that you know these are a few sops that need to be followed um, you know he wouldn't have done it and it wouldn't have happened but at the same time um, you know let's say talk about the hr department or the top brass if they hadn't set all of those sops or if they did set off all, all those sops it wouldn't have happened so it's kind of like the entire cycle but mm. at the same time it's everyone's fault yeah very true so now shom tell me what is this chief minister's fellow and how's experience over there okay uh <coughs> yeah so actually um, i'll kind of uh, you know track back a little i'll tell you exactly how it started um, i was at blue star i was a firmware developer straight out of engineering college i was a firmware coder i used to code every day i used to lead a proper uh, product life um, but i saw that okay that you know in everything that i'm doing um, you know okay some development has been happening the company is progressing uh, the products are being launched to the market then there comes a bug then you fix it it goes through that entire cycle it was a very monotonous life um that's where i found out about the chief minister's fellowship part it was basically started by mr padnavis where uh, every year 50 people are selected from various backgrounds and they are placed into different different verticals of the government we directly work with the is officers report to the chief minister bring in impact handle high scale projects uh, work on public policy so that was the kind of life i wanted and i call it the project life right mm-hmm. uh, so there, there there here comes the difference right the product life and the project life every day is different every day there is something new that is happening and once i started that uh, since then my entire journey has been a project life only um this chief minister's part uh, was uh, a very transformational journey i'll say mm. because uh, i kind of got to see a lot of things uh, i was uh, posted at bmc commissionerate right mm. bmc everyone knows it's uh, asia's largest and richest civic body um bmc does a lot of things that very few people know mm. about uh, at the same time handling so many big projects at such a big scale uh, kind of taught me a lot i got to work with a lot of uh, great mentors after that came covid and uh, covid where covid is where exactly things took a turn uh, i was a part of the covid war room there um, you know there were a few projects that i had to manage where in every project there were around 300 to 500 members 
some projects very few people know but uh, i'd like to mention them um so people were facing a lot of problem in terms of ambulances yeah. um hmm. so how do you deal with that because 108 was the usual uh, hmm. helpline that everyone calls for an ambulance but uh, that was the time where everyone was kind of scared to get out and that uh, you know kind of that's where the drivers also come in right even hmm. they were scared for yeah. their life because yeah. after the entire uh, 12 hour 16 hour job they have to go back so many a times we've seen cases where uh, you know ambulances didn't come on time hmm. or they were unresponsive what hmm. do you do how do you exactly solve that problem <laughs> so instead of reinventing the wheel uh, hmm. we thought why not take a different approach Uh, mm-hmm. we reached out to uber uber already had its own uh, product that they were using for corporates we repurposed it and uh, onboarded all the 500 ambulances of mumbai on that wow so now uh, you'd call the 108 helpline 108 books that ambulance the respective ambulance that you need once you book that the the patient and the family member get all the tracking details of that ambulance ki okay this is the location where it is right now this is the xyz person who is going to come mm-hmm. and uh, you know this much time he will take this is the number you can call so like that there were so many project in fact mumbai was the first city in the entire world to have a containment zone layer on google maps thanks yeah, to the yeah. data collection activity that yes, were on going yes, yes. <coughs> every ward uh, from every ward i think there were 30 40 people that were in that team so 30 multiplied by 24 that was the size of that team and uh, when we shared all of that data with google even they were shocked because new york was second and mm-hmm. once they started that layer on google uh, i think almost after two weeks they had to shut it down because the data was not updated yes but in mumbai if you are traveling and uh, let's say if the route uh, if the initial route was kind of going through a containment zone it used to be updated ki here mm-hmm. is a containment zone you take another turn and you take this route if you are in an office and mm-hmm. the office people are telling you can you have to come to office you can actually show them ki okay this is my location this is where i stay <laughs> dekho mere aaju baju mein containment zone hai wow. uh, mera building sealed hai right so like that there were so many innovative uh, projects that i got to handle wow. i got to work with a lot of uh, very great and interesting people uh, so it was actually a very transformative journey where i actually got to see uh, so much impact in such a less time frame wow It's an interesting journey you had, and you, uh, you were like cyber warriors at the time, which we felicitate during 15 August after the pandemic. Yes, uh, cyber warriors. Yes. So, I would like to dedicate this. But you are uh, a cyber warrior at that time. Thank you. So now, how important it is to integrate technological advancements with cyber security strategies, especially in a rapidly evolving digital landscape, Shivam. Okay. Uh, I'd like to backtrack to the conversation that we are having about AI. Uh, we've seen that with every technological advancement, right? Um, you know, people want to get that technology, be kind of ahead of the curve. Uh, if there are ten companies doing the same kind of thing, if you want to stand out, you'll say, "Okay, I want AI in my X Y Z product," right? But we also need to think about the security aspect of everything. Now, UPI is being used everywhere. Yeah. UPI is safe right but still people have figured out clever ways to trick the entire UPI system also through social engineering right so any technological advancement you want cyber is something that people think about very late but actually this should be the first step with every advancement that you want to do uh, now gps is something that uh, you know everyone uses right be it airplanes be it uh, ships but have you heard of gps spoofing gps spoofing is uh, basically let's say if the if the plane wants to go from let's say uh, delhi to mumbai right so using gps spoofing i can actually change the time and the location that the plane is getting for uh, for the routing part i can basically send that plane to kolkata or any other country it is also possible that because of that uh, the plane actually loses sight of how to exactly land Uh, at night or in a foggy day right because a lot of systems depend on the gps part the gps gps was something that was invented very long ago but 
with every technological advancement the older technology also needs to keep on updating itself if it would have done it uh, let's say if, if encrypted gps positioning uh, system was there in place if there were other methods to verify uh, whether the signal that you are getting is exactly the signal that you would want uh, then these kinds of issues won't have happened in fact almost 5 uh, to 6 years ago itself uh, 1400 ships were uh, stranded mm, yes. and uh, that entire incident happened because of gps spoofing and these kind of attacks keep on rising now if the companies that run these kinds of airlines mm. if they are not uh, you know adept with the technological advancements that should have come these are the kind of things that uh, keep on happening so it's not necessary that you have to keep on bringing new tech but you also need to keep on updating the old tech wow very true very true so now subha my last question for your professional journey uh, what are the critical skills and attributes needed for aspiring professionals to enter into cyber security field okay uh, see okay the first part that i'll mention is uh before before entering this entire journey before entering this entire world of cyber um you need to know that this is not something that is just a 9 to 5 part yes. right uh cyber criminals they are not sleeping at night they are working around the clock and let's mm-hmm. say if some from if for example the things could happen from any of the other countries right so it's it's cyber market is itself it's a global market right yes. Yes. and uh, you know it's not a 9 to 5 job so basically the gen z part or the gen z attitude that a lot of people have uh, that is something that will not work over here yeah, uh, second true. part uh, i would like to call the jugad factor uh, jugad is see basically jugad is something that indians figured out a very long time back and uh, hacking is also a part of jugad only it's kind of jugad only uh, when i talk about the red teaming part in fact i'll just mention this one case uh it was a signature cloning case a digital signature cloning case where uh, a lady almost lost her 400 crore company uh, her mm-hmm. signature was cloned when she was getting on a flight and uh, by the time she landed uh, her resignation was filed on the mca portal and the share transfer process had also begun right so that was something that happened now exactly how do you go about solving that entire case right that's where a lot of jugad part also come in where uh, the team also figured out ki okay if the signature was cloned exactly how was it cloned exactly which app did they use it to scan where the apps uh, banned the at that time or not cam scanner uh, was something that was used right apart from that a lot of other indian jugad systems were used to figure out exactly how it happened mm-hmm. so jugad is something that you need to know and third part is uh, you need to know how to read a code right i'm not mm-hmm. saying that you need to learn how to code but sh- you should know how to read a code if you know <coughs> if you know how to read a code then you can pick the right pieces from other parts think about uh, you know integrating them and that's where you know a new system is born so these three skills if you have and of course you need to keep on updating yourself uh it's not that if you learn x y z today x y z might not be valid tomorrow it yes. could be x y z plus 1 also so wow. keep on updating yourself wonderful wonderful so now let's go to the next round the personal round let's understand shubham as a person tell us about your family and your formative years shubham okay um regarding my family uh, i like to mention that uh, yeah so my so my mom and dad my parents they are the richest parents in the world because they haven't told me no for anything yet um uh, i come from a very simple background my mom is a homemaker but at the same time uh like i'm kind of <coughs> a reflection of my entire family uh, i have a sister who is pursuing pursuing um, mbbs she's in third year and my dad uh, runs a factory uh, we are basically into a lot of uh, manufacturing of stuff Uh, mm-hmm. so it's a typical indian family of four people ek beta engineer beti a doctor that was of course not planned but that's <laughs> the way i it panned out so interesting yeah. so uh let's go back to your college life uh you went to which college and what are your memories and actions you did over there okay 
so um kejo so my was the uh, you know what college i studied at uh, so i like to divide my entire college experience into two parts the first semester and the next seven semesters the first semester was where i was a very shy kid um i was that one person who would not you know kind of participate into anything just uh, kind of go to the college attend those lectures come back have a very normal life but after the first semester is uh, i kind of opened up um transformed from a very shy kid to a very open minded person i started running a few councils started participating everywhere in fact mm-hmm. uh, i used to run this uh, specific vertical where we used to conduct training lectures uh, for the students not just for juniors for seniors also so i remember that uh, in my second year or the start of the third year it, there was a part where a few seniors from the mtech background reached out mm-hmm. uh, they wanted to make a delta model uh, 3d printer so like that there were so many experiences and uh, i had a very good relationship with all of my uh, professors because they knew that even though if he is not here for any lecture uh, he is out there taking a workshop or uh, you know making something breaking something so it was a very transformative journey so wow so now shubham you must be uh, or you say i'm very curious to know how do you plan out your time management especially with your handling multiple projects responsibility yeah. and how, what is your mantra for work life balance okay uh, so people usually say work life balance um i'd like to quote this part that instead of searching for work life balance search for work life integration <coughs> uh i'll explain it a bit bit more but uh, so basically what happens is if you are trying to find a balance it uh, basically means that there will be times where you would want to prefer one thing over the other because it's you would basically try to balance something right yes. and if you're trying to balance something there will be places where one part could be a bit higher and then you try to balance it out but for that you have to reduce this and take this up right that's yes. where the balance part comes in but when you talk about work life integration that's where this happens uh so basically do what you love and uh, if you're doing that for a very long time uh there won't be a single day where you will actually think about work life balance part uh second of course you need time for yourself you need time to kind of you know switch off and uh you know rest come back to life after a few hours and stuff so of course everyone has those times and everyone uh has their own methods or ways to kind of deal with all of that but of course that is also very important very true and regarding t- time management uh, the 60 20 20 mantra is usually i'd like to follow uh prioritize um the 60% of the time that you spend spend only on the prior- prioritized parts 20 on something that needs to be closed in the lo- longer duration and keep that 20% for any things that might just sprung up from anywhere wow so this is is something interesting uh tip you have shared 60 20 20 yes otherwise it is 80 20 uh the formula is there mm. uh we have devised your mm. uh what do you say uh, strategy of yes 60 20 20 correct good thing so friends watch this episode and listen to what 60 means what 20 is what 20 is and implement those steps uh in your life for professional as well as personal and there will be a sanity in your life so now shubha what hobbies or interest do you pursue outside your professional commitments uh i'd like to consider gaming as a hobby uh mm-hmm. because uh, it is also kind of a part of my life where uh, i like to just switch off my brain and just get into it uh i, I know that you'll laugh but uh, basically pubg and bgma is something that i'm a big fan of apart from that i'd like to watch a lot of documentaries netflix series and stuff uh because that is where uh, a lot of you know innovative ideas also come from mm-hmm. because uh, think of it this way if you have limited your thinking in some or the other way if you know the constraints of the world you won't think outside the box series documentaries movies that is something that is made by a person who knew no confines about anything it just flew that was because of the imagination 
Yeah. And uh, that is where, you know, I'd like also you know, kind of focus some part of my time over there. Wow. Interesting. Can you share a memorable experience you have had with your family or friends that impacted your perspective on life? Um, okay, that's a bit tough one. Uh, actually, there were so many, but uh, I'd like, like, I'll mention this one specific case that was like kind of very close to me. Um, it happened during COVID only. So like I was staying outside of my house for the six months. I used to travel like two to three months, uh, you know, once every two to three months to my house to kind of meet my parents and family members. So I think it was almost uh, three to four months and uh, that's where uh, I reached home. And uh, that's where my, my younger sister, she had made like a, exactly like a proper table. Like you see how the books are arranged over here. So she made so many letters, uh, she basically reached out to all the family members, she made everyone that you have to make a proper postcard and a, you know, a greeting card for Bhaiya and mm -hmm. she kind of uh, arranged it all. There were a few small small mm -hmm. gifts, handmade gifts mm -hmm. and uh, the best message that was written over there was uh, thank you Bhaiya <coughs> for saving people. So wow, very sweet, yeah. these memories. So. This is what Coffee Connoisseur does. <laughs> it kind of helped me reflect back a lot of uh, good memories. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Now, my uh, last question will be for you. Describe Shubham in one line. Okay. Um, so I, uh, okay. Calm demeanor and uh, rock solid with uh, empathetic roots. That is uh, what uh, I like to think of myself and uh, some people have already uh, told me that you know this is what exactly I have been. So that's Shubham in one line. Wow, beautiful. So now let's go and have some fun, the rapid fire round. Okay. Uh, a book that has shaped your mindset. Uh, Ikigai. Wow. Uh, that's the, the best book. And second, I'd like to mention two books. Ah, yeah. First Ikigai and second uh, Shiva Triology. Uh, I'm a big fan of Amish Tripathi. In fact, uh, I got a chance to meet him almost like three months back. Mm -hmm. And uh, instead of talking to him, uh, the minute I saw him, I just said hello. And I literally hugged him because that is a book that I have read the entire series three times. And uh, actually, I started reading that book when I was not doing well, uh, mm -hmm. kind of going through a very depressing phase in life. And uh, that book very hell well, uh, you know, helped me come out of a lot of things, see straight in life. So these two books uh, are very transformative for me. Your favorite travel destination? Okay, I've traveled a lot. Uh, uh, I'll pick, I'll pick UK uh, mm -hmm. because covered the entire uh, geography of UK, be it London, Manchester, Wales, Birmingham, Cambridge, Northern Ireland and a few other parts. In fact, uh, some people have told me, people from UK itself have told me that uh, you've seen more UK than us. So, UK, yes. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, your go-to strategy for tackling stress? PUBG. <laughs> <laughs> PUBG and of course, talking to people who uh, have actually gone through that entire drill. And, uh, you know, if you talk to a lot of people who have already have had that experience, it kind of, you know, helps you cloud your entire judgment. Wow. Your favorite movie? Favorite movie? Uh, okay. So, South Indian movies, uh, especially like uh, RRR or uh, KGF, Pushpa, these are the kind of movies that I, you know, just like anytime I can just start and start watching from any part. Wow. Favorite color? Uh, black or navy blue. Okay. Your favorite food dish? Uh, Indian street food, missile pav. Oh, interesting. Tea or coffee? Sorry? Tea or coffee? Uh, I'm a chai person. Okay. I'm not a tea person, I'm a chai person. <laughs> okay, let's restrict. And the proper ginger tea, not the elaichi one. Cheers. Cheers. Best piece of advice you have ever received? Um, hear everyone, but listen to only yourself. Wow. So you did well. Thank and you. And you get to win this okay. book. 
is your organization cyber healthy uh, So friends, we had a lovely conversation with Shubham, understanding different aspects of cyber security, uh, how corporates are being affected, not only corporates, individuals, government are being affected and what steps to be taken and his actions during COVID at the Mumbai COVID war room. It was literally a war room which he shared his journey across and we are very grateful that Mumbai was one of the best city to be managed effectively in all aspects. Uh, doctors did their job. Everyone contributed and people like him, those who were behind, these were all cyber warriors. Sorry, uh, what do you say? Corona warriors. Corona warriors. Corona warriors. Uh, yes. And his interesting journey, we wish him very best. Do subscribe to our Coffee Consultant Show when it is published. We have around 180 plus episodes with different subject experts which we have had. And if you want to be a guest speaker at our Coffee Consultant Show, visit our website, theemergingindiaforum.com, fill in the form, our team will connect with you and invite you to be a guest speaker to share your journey around our subject topic. And enjoy your Sunday. Happy Janmashmi. Enjoy Krishna's food. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Amirji, for uh, reaching out and inviting me. Actually, the entire conversation with you kind of helped me reflect back a lot of things that I had kind of forgotten. But uh, thank you so much. And it was a very lovely conversation with you. Thank you.